balls and throw them at people <laughs> instead of this? I'm 14, Anyway, man. the guy How says... How old are you? How old are you? Oh, 17, something like that, 18, maybe. Wait, so there has to be a third... So you got to shoot a cow in the face and then no, slit... No, in the head. All right. Semantics. You didn't, you didn't want to shoot them in the face because they made probably, you know, something out of the face, too. I don't know. Because there's a lot of mounted cows in rec rooms yeah, in Oklahoma exactly. right now. Exactly. <laughs> With that bullet right there. Costa Rica in that bar that listen to the crab feast. They yeah. got a lot of mounted cows. Or at least that's what they do when the, when the to- fat tourist women come in. They call it mounting cows. I had one with a bullet hole in it, the head. Wait, hold on a second. So someone sh- – you, sh- you – I didn't shoot any of them. I left hold before on a second. I had to. Yo, you didn't shoot, do it. Someone shoots the cow in the head with a twenty two. Yeah, it's hanging upside down. Does that same person yes. in charge of sli- – So yes. you shoot the cow in the head. You shoot the cow in the down. head. And then you slit his throat. But and, wouldn't and just slitting its throat kill the cow? Yeah, but you want to be humane about the whole you thing. You just ripped his <laughs> You blow it through the brains and slide it through. And you're said, not, no, he's hanging humane. up. Don't worry. But first, he's standing regular. Right. Hold on, Ryan. He's standing regular, and he's like, Meh, like just a dumb cow. And then he's got chains on his feet Some that he doesn't know about. Some are smarter than others. Some are smarter than others? Yeah. Anyway. Really? Do you believe that? Oh, yeah. Some cows are smart. How do you know a smart cow? Well, a smart cow wouldn't be stuck in Snyder dress beef, getting his throat slit, and a, a bullet put in his head. <laughs> He would be, be working at the toll, be out toll booth, moon around in the field, or whatever the hell they do. Rest beef. <laughs> so, <laughs> so to kill the slaughter a cow. What year was that? His daughter, Snyder's daughter, was gorgeous too. I remember her. She hardly ever came in the factory though. Yeah, I would hate if you put a twenty-two in her head by accident. Yeah. So they let you handle. Well, hold on. There's so much. They didn't this. let me handle anything. They were training me to be a cow killer. <laughs> it's like the I, was a, I was a cow killer trainee. You were an apprentice, like when the an apprentice. When, when there's a trainee, like at TGI Fridays, they go, "Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm your server. This is Ashley. She's telling me today. Yeah. Our house dressing today is a honey mustard peppercorn. That's always so awkward. There's that fucking almost waitress next to your waitress, and you feel like you got to. You don't know how much a percentage of attention you should give right. that person <laughs> behind the person. Like, so every like twenty percent of the time, you just turn your head and nod, like, "Oh, that sounds really good." Person you next to this, the, new yeah, yeah. Are you getting this? <laughs> So you shoot a cow in the head with a twenty two, then yeah. you slit its throat, and then you, you catch the blood. So in this the is one picture. person does all. This is well, a lot of no. Jobs. The guy who caught the blood is a different guy. The guy shoots him in the head. And okay, I, and so as, if I remember, catchers. if I remember correctly, he he slit the guy's throat. But it probably was the guy shoots him in the head, and the other guy slits his throat and catches the blood at the same time. And then it just goes. He's he's already. Then he gets wheeled down the end, and you know they upside cut the down legs like on yeah. a conveyor yeah, belt. Goes down. Down. If you'd look down the line, there'd be ten dead cows there, and they'd be cutting them up and taking the legs off. I don't know what they do with the legs. How long did you work there? About from let me see. I'd say nine o'clock till lunch. Then I never came back. How many cows got killed while you were there? Oh, dozens, couple dozen. Really? Jesus. Oh yeah. So these guys are like expert cow killers. Hey, they knew what they were True doing. True slaughterhouse. They knew what they were doing. So from nine to noon. Twelve to yeah. twenty, and cows I was supposed died. to do my first cow after the after and, the break. He was and your let buddy me do fucked it. his whole ankle up yeah. in that three hours, and that got bastard. paid for five months. Oh, he got paid for whatever it is, <laughs> and, I'm, and I made. I didn't even go back to pick my checkup. Why not? Because <sighs> just for the hot daughter alone, they would have called me the biggest pussy in the world. They were, it was worth not getting the money. What do you think they're not calling you that? Yeah, but they're not. Wait till they hear they, this. They stopped in about nineteen seventy four. Do you skip your favorite sporting events or concerts because you think tickets are too expensive? Think again. Scorebig.com makes live events affordable. 40% of live event tickets go unsold each year. Even when the arena or stadium is full, thousands of tickets are comped out or given away to make it look like a sellout. Minnesota Twins. Scorebig.com works directly with the box office and other ticket providers to sell these tickets. Every ticket on Scorebig.com is guaranteed to be between 10% and 60% off below retail price. Great seats from the front row to the rafters. Purchase your tickets days, weeks, or even months in advance. There are no fees or shipping charges ever. It is impossible to pay full price on scorebig.com. You are guaranteed to save on tickets. I love these people. Register on scorebig.com this week and use the code J-A-Y, J, to get an extra $10 off your purchase. This week only, go to scorebig.com, click on the radio button, and enter the code J. That's J-A-Y. Always less than full price, never any fees. Scorebig.com. That's scorebig.com. Enter the code J. Don't forget to enter J at scorebig.com. 
Uncle Dan, have you ever worked at a storage center? No, never worked at the storage center. You've done a lot of security work, which I found out, oh, yeah. because oh, you're yeah. the mellowest, most easygoing. Ryan Sickler is going through. Not when you give me a fascinated. Hold on a Ryan, Sickler's, Ryan Sickler's going through your resume of jobs like he's preparing for his fantasy football draft. <laughs> I like love it. Page you after page you after have page. To. Number eight that caught my attention also. Uh, Westboro Abrasives oh, made yeah. the, it, says, it says here, made the actual grinding wheels dash a lot of Puerto Rican girls on the night. They were, they were all Puerto Rican girls. They would harass the shit out of us. You know, we were like 18, and these girls would harass in, in Spanish. They'd harass the shit out of us. How do you know they're harassing you if it's in another language? Because, you know, they're saying stuff, and then they'd all laugh, laugh at you. They'd just die <laughs> to meet you. So bring a case of wine. Mick Jagger knew what he was singing about. Yeah, no dude. kidding. There's a Puerto Rican. What's, what was that place called? Abrasives? Westboro Wash, Abrasives. Westboro Abrasives. There's Puerto Rican girls just dance to <laughs> meet West you. Bro. Actually, the, the, the worst one was Washington Mill Abrasives. A couple Wait, up from that one. you worked at two different places. What are two abrasives? Two different abrasive Abrasives companies. are things. You know how you buy a grinding wheel? Besides Jay Larson, what's Abra- an abrasive? <laughs> an abras- abrasive yeah. stuff is the stuff that goes inside of grinding wheels. This place, Washington Mill Abrasives. Though, wait, the, what's an embrace? And I know the people okay. listening like Do they you know grind up. No, I don't. They I grind don't. up these rocks into teeny weeny little pieces, and then they put them in this. How thing. big is teeny weeny? Oh, you know, like that big, like okay. a, a BB. Anyway, and then they, they they push them all together, and they make grinding wheels out of them. But Washington Mill abrasives were the guys that j- all they did was grind the stuff up and then send it to like Westboro abrasives, and they'd put it together. But that, this place had so many rats. I mean, rats. You'd, but you'd look out the window. It was right. There was like a little river running down. And there'd be, I'm not even exaggerating, 100, 200 rats down there. <laughs> so the way they would grind up this stuff is they would have these big cages with these little like Super Balls before the Super Balls were even known. And they'd bounce all over the place. So we would take a few of those out. And you'd lean out the window and you'd throw it down on the creek where all these rats. You, I mean, it was so cool to see 200 rats scamper all over the place. But you'd be working there. All of a sudden, you'd look down at your feet, and it'd be rats walking all over the place. So I worked there about two days. My buddy and I. <laughs> two days. Two days. I couldn't take it. My buddy the and I. Puerto Rican girls we were fa- there, though. We fa- oh, that was at the other place. That was, oh, that that was, was the first Puerto Rican girls. The rats, no, what was worse, the Puerto Rican no girls Puerto or the rats? girls at this place. Even they wouldn't work, work in this place. I'll tell you that right Even now. They Even they wouldn't. wouldn't did the Puerto Rican girls, did the rats, what, what bothered you more, the Puerto Rican girls teasing you or the rats on your feet? I didn't mind the Puerto Rican girls teasing me. The rats, I hate rats, so I, you know, it, just, it just drove me crazy. My buddy and I, we both decided to quit. So... You know, we knew if we went there and just said we're quitting, the guy would give us a hard time about his check because that was like pre-labor laws and they could keep your check forever. So we faked, we faked that we got into an accident down in Cape Cod. It's true. And I went in there and I wrapped my foot up and, and you know, in my knee. And, and I went in there with a crutch and he, we put a big bandage on his head and we went into this guy and said, <laughs> you look oh, like we a got, revolutionary we got yeah. Yeah. on a plate. <laughs> That's exactly. Drawing. We said we got into a big accident down in Cape Cod. We, we got into an accident with the Hessians. Yeah. One crutch. Yeah. He gave us. He gave us a check. He was holding, told, a, he was holding a flute. <laughs> we flag. told him we'd be back in two weeks, <laughs> and you we never t- went back. Oh, are you kidding me? I'm not going to go back to some place where there's more rats than there are people working. Where there's more rats than there are Puerto Rican girls. That was my. <laughs> that was my rule in those days. What was your rule? If there were more rats than Puerto Rican girls, I didn't work there. That was the rule. There's got to be more Puerto Rican I'll girls than rats. Puerto That's Rican exactly girls. right. Those what what was that, right? Right. That I would work with those Puerto Rican. They girls. were fun. Uh, Ryan loves women of color. Ryan's a big fan of the African American gals. Oh, and, uh, I, he loves I mean, I love Puerto all Rican women, girls. but brown, just you know. If it's brown, brown flush brown. it down. If it's yellow, let it mellow. Is that how it goes? I don't know. I've never, never heard, heard that, that one. I've never. Oh, heard it's that. old recycling. City, I heard yes. yellow. If yellow, it's yellow, let it dollar. mellow. If it's a brown, flush it down. Oh, okay. Like, don't flush your pee. You never heard that before? No. You really? Say yeah. it again. If, if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. So, like, if you take a leak, don't flush it. It's don't just waste piss water. And, you know, it's just piss. You could save, like, 100,000 gallons a year just by not flushing your pee. And then when the mm-hmm. apocalypse comes, it won't really probably make a difference. Here's one that I think you and I, Jay Moore, will both enjoy. Um, number 26 on at the bottom of page two. I haven't two. had 26 jobs I ever. <laughs> this is only page oh. two. The uh, Milford House. The Milford House where Uncle Dan lived as a counselor in a psychiatric halfway house. This was wait, so- wait, hold on a second. How I've known you a long time. Yeah. You're not a doctor. Well, I'm not really. <laughs> <laughs> my, I don't have the my degrees paperwork to prove it. Says otherwise. Um, you didn't have to be a doctor to work there. You went. You went diner construction. All right. You went yeah. country club diner construction 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 
diner, cafeteria, restaurant, ice cream, psych ward. I couldn't make up, <laughs> I couldn't make up my mind whether I wanted to be a, a construction worker or a short order cook. So, you know, I just couldn't. So Why couldn't you just figure out a way out. to be a short order cook for construction workers? That would have been good if I could have figured it out. The Milford House lived there as a counselor in a psychiatric halfway house. Yep. Norman. Who's Norman? Oh, oh this, these are just some of the characters. There you go. I got it right here. Oh, uh, he's m- the Milford House was, as I said, a psychiatric halfway house. And th- in those days, they were emptying all the state institutions in Massachusetts. All the, you know, they just were taking all the people out of the state hospitals. So they made all these. And those of you listening at home, that's a C-130 troop transport plane going overhead. Just deal with it. Go ahead. Over there. Don't worry anyway, about it. We're not stopping. This the Milford fun. House had, like, up to 12 people. They were all had been in the state hospital for years and years and years. And what we were, we were just counselors. We'd live there, and, you know, you just take care of these people. You bring them to their jobs. You bring them to their workshops. Do you think you got hired? Sorry to interrupt. Do you think you got hired because they saw uh, your work in the slaughterhouse, and they saw you shoot a cow in the head with a twenty two and slit its throat and catch his blood, and they said, you know what, if Norman gets yes. out of line, we'll sick Dan Hoyt on him. Exactly. In fact, that, that's, you know, they asked me my qualifications, and I said, you know, I just told them that. And I said, I'll shoot these bastards right in the head if they don't <laughs> mind their own business. And then, you know. <laughs> How do you get? But if you well, no, somebody's got to lift them up. Up yeah. at our feet first. That's right. <laughs> Who? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody nice. does that. I like. That was a big RBI double. That just hit the wall with a thump. That hit the wall so hard you got stranded at first. As a stand-up two bagger, I would hope. Um, yeah. well, let's wait for the apartheid truck to go by. And by the way, if you got questions for Uncle Dan, we'll bring them back. Hashtag Uncle Dan more stories, and I'll uh, collate them all into one uh, one aggregated stream. And because uh, I know you guys have got them out. I have questions for Uncle Dan. What, how do you know to apply at a mental hospital as a job, as a counselor, coming off of eight construction and seven restaurant jobs? What part of that made you say, you know what? I need to help people that are mentally ill. I had nothing to do with that. I, I got up, and I needed a job, and I looked in the paper, and you know that must have been one that was right there. You know, right, I mean, there, I, like I, right there in front of you or right, right there, there in front of your house? I was just a great interviewer. I would just look at a job and say, I'm going to take that job. And, you know, it, was, it wasn't like I was overly qualified or underqualified or anything. Oh, you, I just, what do you mean overly qualified? Overly. It's a mental hospital. <laughs> no, and I, you walked it's in. It's a psychiatric <laughs> halfway house. These guys, these guys are a step up from the overly mental hospital. Overly qualified. Uncle Dan's going, it wasn't a psych ward. It was a psychiatric halfway house. That's right. It's not Amway. It's Confederated Home Products. It's a completely different breed of product. Hey, that was a great job. You know, there were like, there were like three, three of us lived there. You know, we lived on the third you floor. You lived in the place? Oh, yeah. Why? I lived on the third floor. Because so, that's what you had to. You I had to. What is explained? So well, we would get up. There'd be like ten or twelve. He people didn't tell there. you what he wanted to explain. Oh, good, Why good. were these men there? Like what was in woman? It was mixed. okay, men and women. So what Any was action? there? Any Puerto Rican girls? Uh, no Puerto Rican no girls. Puerto Rican girl. What was their main? Did they have like mental breakdowns? Like why were they there, yeah, well, being uh, uh, acclimated back into well, society? Most of them, have, for some reason or other, had been stuck in a state hospital years before when they were kids. A lot of you know even. Some, some of them had bon- been bonafidely crazy, but some of them were just like epileptics. And in those days, if you were epileptic, they'd just shove you in there. And then even if you weren't crazy, you became crazy after a if few If you're years. bonafide crazy, did they give you a ribbon or a plaque? They'd give you a, a tattoo. <laughs> a number. Anyway, they were all there. And our job was just to get them to their workshops and, you know, do counseling sessions like we knew what we were doing but you'd get, mostly get them to their workshops or their regular jobs nobody really had a regular job they all worked at workshops and you know there was a social center downtown there were t- there were what a- town is this in milford massachusetts i mean it was a wacky job let me tell you this guy this <laughs> guy so? but they weren't crazy How so? They're high. this guy <laughs> we live in a crazy house we <laughs> this, guy, crazy. this guy this guy louis this guy louis <laughs> had a thing about looking at his reflection and if he's sitting here just looking at you right now, he would be able to see his reflection in your retina. Or he'd look at you'd – you'd see and all of a sudden he'd be doing this and he'd be looking at his reflection. And, and no matter what, he could see his reflection. You'd be in a room like and you'd say he, – Louis will never be able to see his reflection. Any, and he would see his reflection in whatever it was. He would zone on that he like it was on a on lamp that. or was something. Was he a handsome guy at least? Uh, no, no, Louis wasn't that handsome. But this one guy, Dick Zeff, Reinhardt Zeff, Reinhardt Zeff, was – I mean this guy was – a. Just a handsome, handsome man, but as crazy as whatever. I mean, crazy. Was he crazy. a German man? Yeah. yeah. Reinhard Zeff. Reinhard Zeff. Poor Reinhardt. He was like, you know, a great-looking guy, 
and just was crazy from when he was seven or eight years old. So, you know, I <laughs> never met a seven year old crazy person. He was. He, he got he's one of these guys that when he was like seven or eight years old, start, they put him in institutions and he stayed there until he came to the Milford House. And it's our job after 40 something years to straighten his ass out. Right, that's How the hell are you going to do that? Right. <laughs> You'd say, Dick, what do you want to do today? You know, I mean, he was just as wacky as. Wacky as can be. I mean, Dick. Dick was just the craziest person you ever want to like, meet. Well, how, like what? Tell us the story. What him. would happen with Dick when, when all of a sudden too much pressure would happen? Dick would just start screaming. I mean, you'd be it'd be something, anything, just a little bit of pressure. Like you'd say, "Hey, Dick, you got to put your shoes on. We're going outside. You can't go out bare feet. It's winter time. <laughs> you know, pressure. It's winter." <laughs> oh, and Dick pressure. would start screaming and walking on. down the street. Yeah. So they let you handle. Well, hold on. There's so much. They didn't this. let me handle anything. They were training me to be a cow killer. <laughs> it's like the Marine I was Corps. A, I was a cow killer trainee. You were an apprentice, like when the an apprentice. When, when there's a trainee, like at TGI Fridays, they go, "Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm your server. This is Ashley. She's telling me today. Yeah, our house dressing today is a honey mustard peppercorn. That's always so awkward. There's that fucking almost waitress next to your waitress, and you feel like you got to. You don't know how much a percentage of attention you should give right. that person <laughs> behind the person. Like, so every like twenty percent of the time, walls and throw them with people <laughs> instead of this. I'm fourteen. Anyway, man. the guy. How says, old are you? How old are you? Oh, seventeen, something like that. Eighteen, maybe. Wait, so there has to be a third. So you got to shoot a cow in the face and then no, slit in the it. head. All right, Samantha. You didn't. You didn't want to shoot them in the face because they made probably you know something out of the face too. I don't know. Because there's a lot of mounted cows in rec rooms yeah, in Oklahoma exactly. right now. Exactly. <laughs> with that bullet right there. Costa Rica in that bar they listen to the crab feast they yeah. got a lot of mounted cows or at least that's what they do when the when the to- fat tourist women come in they call it mounting cows I had one with a bullet hole in it the head you just turn your head and nod like oh that sounds really good person you next to this the- <laughs> New yeah, yeah are you getting this <laughs> so you shoot a cow in the head with a twenty two then yeah. you slit its throat and then you, you catch the blood so in this the is one picture. person does all this is well, a lot of no jobs. the guy who caught the blood is a different guy the guy shoots him in the head okay, and so and as, if I remember catchers. if I remember correctly. He he slit the guy's throat, but it probably was. The guy shoots him in the head, and the other guy slits his throat and catches the blood at the same time. And then it just goes. He's he's already. Then he gets wheeled down the end, and you know they upside cut the down legs like on a yeah. conveyor yeah, belt. Goes down. Down. Wait, hold on a second. So someone sh- you sh- you. I didn't shoot any of them. I left oh, hold on a second. I had to. Yo, you you didn't shoot, do it. Someone shoots the cow in the head with a twenty-two. Yeah, it's hanging upside down. Does that same person yes. in charge of slit? So yes. you shoot the cow in the head. You shoot the cow in the down. head, and then. You slit his throat. But and, wouldn't and just slitting its throat kill the cow? Yeah, but you want to be humane about the whole you thing. You just ripped his <laughs> <laughs> You blow it through the brains and slide its throat. And you're you not, said, no, he's hanging up. Don't worry. But first, he's standing regular. Right, hold on, Ryan. He's standing regular, and he's like, Meh, like just a dumb cow. And then he's got chains on his feet Some that he doesn't know than about. Others, Rips Some mostly. are smarter than others? Yeah. Anyway. Really, do you believe that? Oh, yeah. Some cows are smart. How do you know a smart cow? Well, smart cow wouldn't be stuck in Snyder dress beef, getting his throat slit, and a, bu- a bullet put in his head. <laughs> he would be, be working out at the toll, he'd be out toll booth, moon turn- around in the field, or whatever the hell they do. Dressed beef. <laughs> so, so to kill the slaughter a cow. What year was that? His daughter, Snyder's daughter, was gorgeous too. I remember her. She hardly ever came in the factory though. Yeah, I would hate if you put a twenty-two in her head by accident. Yeah. 